everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. Welcome once more to another video podcast of PNT Live, Political News Time. So what I would like to discuss this morning revolves around how the entertainment industry and events, scandals, happenings, news within the entertainment industry oftentimes shape legislation within the United States of America, particularly within the state of California. Now, this morning I'm going to read to you an article from NBCnews.com. It's dated October 13th, 2017, and it is titled, New California law reduces penalty for knowingly exposing someone to HIV. A lot of people, believe it or not, are not aware of this particular change in California. Um, And I have been astounded that there have been a lot of performers, active performers in the adult entertainment industry who I have communicated with who are not aware of this particular change in legislation. But it's important to discuss, especially being that Dr. Drew Pinsky of Love Line and um, several other call-in shows is running for... um, a California congressional seat. I just was talking about that the other day. Um, But I'm really glad about that because Dr. Drew over the years has gathered a lot of information when it comes to the mentality within both the adult entertainment industry and the mainstream Hollywood um, circles. And I worry about the people that are being exploited to develop these films. Now, some of them feel good about it, but a lot of them don't. I've treated a lot of them. So it's, it's something's not right with all this. And uh, that's my position. And one thing that he has consistently noted over the years is that a lot of the hypersexuality in conjunction with um, a high degree of narcissism within the Southern California populace has led to a lot of... Um, a lot of addiction, a lot of um, psychological dysfunction. It's really cultivated an environment to where mental illness thrives. And um, what's good about Dr. Drew running for office is that it will at least temporarily bring a lot of these themes to the attention of the mainstream. But um, it does seem that level of mental illness and um, narcissism and sociopathic tendencies has trickled into politics and it's possible that the reduction of the penalty for the transmission of HIV has occurred because so many powerful people or at least notable people have, um, have knowingly exposed others to HIV. The first person who comes to my mind when it comes to such a case is uh, Charlie Sheen. We all remember that Charlie Sheen situation. And um, it was just recently, actually, that an adult entertainment industry blog known as Mike South reported that an adult actor who everyone thought had left the industry but apparently is still... uh, performing in some capacity, a guy known as T.J. Cummings, who um, there was news at one point of him being having been diagnosed with HIV, but it seems like he wants to come back and perform now in the industry. And what's interesting about the, that situation is that um, he essentially could, because believe it or not, there's a lot of people who are active in the industry, meaning the adult entertainment industry, who are indeed HIV positive. You can be HIV positive nowadays and be an active porn star. There's quite a few known names in the, or on the um, LGBTQ side of the industry. But when it comes to um, the quote unquote straight side of the industry, there is quite a big name who's had um, physical sexual contact 
with non-HIV performers, but who is HIV positive himself. And that individual I'm talking about is John Stagliano. But um, John Stagliano is not alone. And that is something that has been of great concern to a lot of people in the adult entertainment industry, or, or at least attached to it, who um, are concerned about new people who may be coming into the industry being exposed to individuals who are secretly HIV positive. Um, over the years, I have had mixed feelings when it comes to the bigotry that I have seen within the adult entertainment industry when it comes to a lot of hate towards people who are HIV positive. All right. Um, on one hand, of course, I don't think that anyone should knowingly expose another person. But on the other hand, do I feel like they should be excluded from a particular industry because of their STD status? No, but how would you control the uh, transmission in such a situation? That's been a problem that I feel the Free Speech Coalition has been attempting to solve now for several years. Um, what's the solution? We'll save that for another podcast. But what I want to convey to people who may not be familiar with the adult entertainment industry, but who are considering taking part, um, participating, or whatever it is that you want to do. Maybe you just want to have sex with a porn star. Um, what you need to understand is that there are people within that world who are active as far as um, performing sexually who are HIV positive. Considering that the uh, penalty to knowingly transmit has been lowered to only about six months in prison, if that depends on your attorney, um, a lot of people who are positive would feel like, hey, why should I disclose? I'm not going to get in that big of trouble anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Another thing I want to touch on, the adult entertainment industry historically has always sought people of color to name as patient zero whenever there has been an HIV or other outbreak of other STDs, okay? Um, Darren James, Cameron Bay, a lot of people don't realize that Cameron Bay was a woman of color. Um, and there have been other cases, but uh, it does seem as though talent of color is being persuaded or conditioned more so than talent of European descent into um, feeling that it's safe or thinking that it's safe to routinely have sexual contact with someone who is HIV positive due to maybe um, barrier protection being used or um, their viral load being lowered to a certain degree. But I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tell all, all of you today, it's not safe. Okay? Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, the adult entertainment industry, especially the corporate level adult entertainment industry, such as MindGeek or Manwin, they may, may also offer incentives such as contracts or um, multi-scene or multi-movie deals to talent of color in order to persuade them to work with HIV positive performers. But again, don't do it. Don't do it not worth it um no amount of money is worth you putting yourself at risk of death 
Some people are like, oh, HIV now, it's a manageable disease. Only if you got money. And the only way that you're really going to have money in the adult entertainment industry is if you are essentially someone's slave and you forfeit your spiritual and physical rights. Not, not smart. Not smart at all. Um, a lot of girls at one point thought that the money was worth the risk to hang out with Charlie Sheen. Was it really? No. I'm just going to read this article to all of you to close real quick. Again, it's titled, New California Law Reduces Penalty for Knowingly Exposing Someone to HIV. California Governor Jerry Brown signed into law Senate Bill SB 239, which reduces penalties for knowingly exposing a sexual partner to HIV. Under current California law, it is felony offense punishable by three to eight years in, pre in prison. The new law, which was signed by Brown on October 6, 2017, and takes effect January 1, 2018, changes this to a misdemeanor, carrying a six-month prison term, the same punishment as knowingly exposing someone to other communicable diseases. I'm going to pause right there just to kind of complete the thought I started on before I started reading this article. There are a lot of people out there who feel that it's a-okay to um, transmit HIV to a person of color without incurring any penalties. A lot of people look down on people of color, be they black, Asian, Latin, somewhere in between. Um, there are some people who have acquired HIV who um, actually have the agenda of infecting as many people of color as possible. I know that sounds far-fetched, but it is not. There have been <laughs> news items posted about such things, but um, now is not the time to be a part of the adult entertainment industry. I think in the future, it may be more of a viable path or decision for a young person, but I wouldn't go in that world today. If I knew years ago what I know now, I wouldn't have gone into the adult entertainment industry because I didn't realize that I was viewed as subhuman human by being a person of color, okay? And... Um, just knowing that there's people in that world who feel like, well, hey, that's a black girl. It doesn't matter if she gets HIV. Just don't say anything to her when she works with that white guy who has a low viral load. That's the mentality of a lot of people in the industry, okay? So people can call me a bitch if they want to. They can call me crazy if they want to. They can say whatever they want to, but the fact of the matter is I am the longest running adult entertainment industry blogger who is independent as of current. I, to my knowledge, am the only adult entertainment industry independent blogger who actually was a porn star, who actually was in award winning movies. I know what I'm talking about, okay? So I don't have to sit here and warn you. And uh, I probably won't issue another warning like this for a very long time. But uh, I do believe in educating people, giving them as much information as possible so that they can make their own decisions. And I believe in... Uh, the First Amendment. So let me go ahead and continue reading this so I can get out of here. 
The law also reduces the penalty for knowingly donating blood infected with HIV from a felony to a misdemeanor. Democrats Scott Weiner and Todd Gloria authored the legislation, which was passed in the Senate in May and approved by the Assembly in early September. The measure was co-sponsored by more than 130 advocacy organizations, including Equality California, the ACLU of California, APLA Health, Black AIDS Institute, Lambda Legal, and Positive Women's Network USA. In a press statement in May, Senator Weiner said the bill aims to modernize the law in line with advancements in medical treatment for HIV and changing social perceptions. I won't read the whole thing, but you guys get the idea. So basically, because so many people, a large percentage of people in California, which is where the porn industry is based in, have contracted HIV and have both unknowingly and knowingly transmitted it to people who did not have HIV um, because it's been so many people and it's likely tied up the courts to such an extent and because so many people who are powerful people, people with money, have committed this crime, they have lowered the penalty to a misdemeanor. Yeah. 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 So again, the adult entertainment industry doesn't pay enough from my perspective to um, basically compensate someone who is potentially going to shorten their life. So I wouldn't go into that world nowadays. Not at all. And girls who are in that world, who are active, I highly advise that before you date any guy who has been in that world for more than two years, please run a Google search on him, learn his history, see if he he was ever caught up in any HIV scandals prior to you joining the industry, because he might be looking at you as a potential meal ticket for the future. And if he's got something, and he wants to keep you, he might be thinking, hey, let me go ahead and infect this girl so I can trap her. It used to be to where pimps would trap their victims by getting them pregnant. Now they might be trapping their victims by infecting them with HIV. You hear me? Hope so. Have a great day. Once more, I'm Alex Mayers of PNT Live. Bye-bye.